for RCR Wireless News. I'm Sean Kinney and welcome to Global Joe. We're going to take you around the world of telecom and ICT news. And I'm Joey Jackson. A big thank you as always to our sponsor TelecomCareers.com, the industry's largest resume database and job board. All right, first up this morning, China Mobile and Nokia Networks have something to brag about. They set a new LTEA speed record. Yeah, it's all about speed. You know, China Mobile, Nokia Networks, and Oridu uh, Qatar achieved 4.1 gigabit per, spe per second speed record over hybrid TDD FDD LTE. The companies achieved the feat by aggregating 10 carriers of both TDD and FDD spectrum. Uplink speeds exceeded 300 megabytes per second. This broke the previous record set in June by Nokia and SK Telecom. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal. That's a really high speed and carrier aggregation. We've been talking about that a mm -hmm. little around the newsroom. That's going to be a big deal. Yep. Next up, Korea's ST Telecom also broke some new ground by completing the first open source M2M IoT platform. M2M is the largest standardization body for machine to machine communication. The newly developed platform supports not only M2M terminals, but also IoT devices in what's called B2C, that's body to computer areas, mm -hmm. that's like uh, wearables and smart accessories. Yep. SK Telecom plans to finalize the national project in the first quarter of next year. Yeah, I mean, a lot of firsts going on, people people set new standards, so that's, right. that's pretty cool. In Delhi this morning, the Spectrum Showdown with uh, Barty Airtel, Vodafone, and the Telecom Commission may be closer to an ending. The Telecom Commission is likely to take a call today on the carrier's request to extend permits to use the expired spectrum. The spectrum permits expired on November 29th, but both companies have continued to use to avoid uh, service disruption to around 10 million customers. That's a lot of customers. Yeah, basically they, they ran out of their, their license before it could be renewed by the regulatory body. So one of their, uh, you know, they're obviously not a competitor because they're helping them out by letting them use expired Spectrum. But yeah. we'll see how it all shakes out. Spectrum licensure, that's a big deal in America and around the world. Yep. In Telco Cloud Talk this morning out of New Zealand, Auckland-based telecom provider Cordia says it's the first Australasian telco to connect with and provide private access service to Microsoft's Azure platform. They're doing that using ExpressRoute. Cordia CTO Aaron Olfert says ExpressRoute will deliver faster speeds and higher security. And now we have a few stories that relate to OTTs or over-the-top players. These are companies like your Facebook or your WhatsApp that use traditional network functionality to provide voice messaging, digital content services that's not really subject to the rate plan that you pay your provider. Based on a new research report from Infonetics, OTT's pay television revenue is projected to grow from $5.8 billion this year to more than $10 billion in 2018. Okay. Overall, the global market's seen a growth to a total market value of $117 billion, billion with a B, yep. dollars. According to the Infonetics report, satellite and telco pay TV revenue continues to grow based on new subscriptions. Staying with OTT's, uh, pan-European mobile operator Tele2 has launched a new video service for mobile devices, INR, in, in, in Russia. In Russia. <laughs> uh, sorry, Teleprompter got me there. <laughs> Tele2 already has some 34 million customers in 10 countries. The new Russian product allows subscribers to watch on smartphones and tablets without paying for extra data. The OTT service comes with built-in search and other features. That's right. You know, more OTT news this morning, Joey. We're seeing a lot of top uh, stories on this topic. For instance, broadcaster TV5 has joined up with Brand New Media to launch an online network in the Philippines. The new production project set to launch in February 2015, and the network will carry original content from the Philippines as well as foreign content. Mm. Network will be called For Me and will be available on any internet connected device without a subscription fee. We're sort of delving in the metaphysical here, uh, talking about online television on our online television shows. <laughs> As I can attest, it's the wave of the future, that digital was, content. That was deep, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> more OTT news uh, this morning, perhaps of a little more interest to our viewers in America. A popular comedy group, The Lonely Island, has signed a deal with Fox to bring content from their YouTube channel to over-the-top devices. The three main groups include popular Saturday Night alum Andy Sandberg and his writing partners Akiva Schaefer and Jorma Tacone. The new OTT product is called Party Over Here, an, <laughs> an in, in a tale run of, of three new shows will be available through services like Hulu and Roku. That was a Lonely Island uh, 
piece from Saturday Night Live. Yeah. So lots more stuff like that to look forward to. Yeah, this is I'm on a boat. Yeah, <laughs> among other classics, you know, there's a, we we tried to get a, a video clip to play for y'all that wasn't just littered with curse words, and that was impossible. They like to the curse. They out. like to the curse. So That's you know. right. <laughs> Well, and it pays to be in telecom and have construction companies. Arabian Business just named the Sawiris family, the founders of Orsacom, the wealthiest people in the construction industry. Family owns Orsacom Telecom, a construction company, and several IT businesses for an estimated wealth of $11.3 billion. Uh, that's it for today. Special thanks to our sponsor, uh, TelecomCareers.com. And we'll see you back here for the Midday Show, Midday Mobile. Please join us. Have a good one.